Well, it's time to take a look at our health now. We all know that too much time in front of the computer is not great for us. And now it's believed tech-related illnesses can go far further than just giving us square eyes. Research shows medical conditions ranging from hearing loss to depression and even thrombosis can all arise after spending too much time engaging with our technology. Dr Joe Kosterich joins us now. Dr Joe, good morning to you. Morning, Tim. How does someone get from spending too much time in front of a computer to becoming depressed? depressed. What's the process there? It's a fairly, probably, fairly long and, and potentially sort of multifaceted one. And I think often with these things, it is more than just one factor. And sometimes it cuts a little bit two ways. The biggest issue probably with social media is that people spend, may spend too much time doing it. And look, we all know about Photoshop and people tend to put on, uh, particularly Facebook mm. pic and on Instagram, pictures of themselves that probably look the best they can be. And I suppose we've always got to wonder, well, is that actually you or has somebody <laughs> sort of, you know, maybe just adjusted it a little bit, made the teeth yeah. a little bit whiter, the, uh, um, you know, the, the tan a little the bit. Skin's sort of, yeah, exactly. a little bit more pleasant. So then we're sitting at home looking at this thing, oh, gee, these people look better than, oh, look at that, they're having fun, you know, you've got a picture of somebody, you know, water skiing or, or on the <laughs> mountains or doing something yeah. like that and you're thinking, well, I'm just sort of sitting in my, you know, room mm. here. So we sort of have this view that everybody's doing better than us, but it may well be mythology. So we're comparing ourselves not against people that we know. If you meet your friends or you talk to people out mm. and about, you sort of know what they're mm. doing. You have some sort of validity to what they might say they've been at. Whereas you see something on social media and you might think, wow, look at all these people having a wonderful life, look at me. But you're, and you get depressed or feel depressed, but you're really comparing yourself to something that is not real. Yeah, narcissism is rife. <laughs> Social media, got a lot to answer for. Uh, for a lot of people, sitting at a desk uh, in front of a computer, it's unfortunately part of a lot of people's day-to-day -day jobs. We've, we've heard already a lot about, you know, neck strain and, and, and pains and aches mm. that go with that. But what are some of the other issues that can arise from just physically sitting down staring at your computer screen and not doing a whole lot else, no movement. Look, again, it is more in some respects to do with the sitting down, perhaps more than the technology itself. But I suppose we end up sitting down because, look, a lot of work these days is, is sedentary. You know, myself, mm. I sit in an office. Um, I'm not out there sort of ploughing fields or, you know, digging ditches, I suppose. Historically, people did tend to move, and now we don't. And what has been shown repeatedly is that the longer time we spend sitting down, the less good it is for us. And that's, unfortunately, regardless of exercise. And that's higher rates of, of heart attacks, increased increased rates of type 2 diabetes and, and above all else, and I must, and I do have to emphasise with these things, it's correlation, nobody's shown the mechanism, mm. that the longer we spend sitting, there is actually a lower life expectancy. So people who sit more tend to die a little bit earlier than those who are, who are more active. Excellent. Exactly why, we don't know. But look, here's the good part, Tim, there is a solution. All you need to do is get up every sort of hour and a half or two and, you know, stretch your legs, go for a walk for two minutes, so it's not insurmountable. We should be standing right now, then. Well, we probably could, <laughs> we probably could but I suspect um, <laughs> people will be looking, saying, be looking say at that. me and saying, why is that guy so short? <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Don't be such a narcissist. Uh, some people choose to spend a lot of time in front of their computers or their yeah. Xbox or whatever. We're talking about gamers and, and people who are just obsessed with, uh, with, with computer games and that sort of stuff. What sort of dangers do they face from spending hour yeah. upon hour Look, doing yeah, that. Apart from the ones we've just spoken about, there is this, a, a risk that if you do sit for too long continuously uh, that you can get what's called a, a DVT or a deep vein thrombosis where a blood clot forms in the leg and then that can track up to the uh, to the lungs. Now that's been more associated with long plane flights because mm. you, you're sitting in one position for a long time, yep. you know, maybe for 10, 14, whatever hours. Yep. Um, it wasn't really the case that you should be sitting on your couch for that sort of length of time. So if people are gaming or, again, just sitting for extended periods of time and not moving their legs, and it, you, know, you know, if you're on a plane now, they have even through the uh, entertainment news it comes on and says, oh, look, make sure you're stretching your legs, doing something. Mm. So, yes, that is a risk, and that's a relatively new thing. Again, the solution is just to get up periodically or, you know, something really radical, maybe switch off the, the set for a while. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, there is one other aspect of, uh, particularly with teenagers, a little bit 
to do with adults as well, is that it has been shown that there can be um, a reduction in people's ability to recognise human emotions and a loss of creativity. And they did some work a few years ago. They took people out into a bush setting for about three or four days, gave them some exams to do mm. before and after, and the scores went up on creative and thinking tasks after a few days without any sort of um, right? screens. Yeah, we worked that in, I think, in Colorado. Something to be said stuff. for good old-fashioned human interaction. Look, it's a bit of a mix. We, we can't wind the clock back and go and live in, in caves. So there's no use saying we're going to switch off all the fun and, and you know, even for parents, you can't stop your, your teens using technology. But it can be probably, probably in some instances managed better. So we use it as a tool yeah. rather than it controlling us. Hearing loss, is there a simple guide for how loud is too loud? Look, generally above 85 decibels is a, is a problem. How would some someone the... know how loud that is if they're sticking their, <laughs> yeah. their earphones in? Is, is there a simple way you can go, that's too loud? Probably the, 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 the simple rule of thumb test is that if you can't hear over the noise coming into your ears, then you've probably got a problem. So yeah. if people are calling you... If you can't hear the car as you yeah. cross the road. Yeah, that's... A... <laughs> Yeah, that might be a bad way to find out. <laughs> you may want to find out before that happens. But, look, if you are at home and somebody calls out, you know, it's dinner, and you're just sitting there, sort of, uh, um, <laughs> and that happens a second time, then that's probably told you it's yeah. a little bit too loud. So, yes, the idea of having headphones is that you don't get outside noise coming mm. in, but if it's so loud that you can't hear somebody calling you, then it yeah. is too loud. Like Mum or Dad screaming. Dr Joe, thank you. As always, we'll catch you again next Wednesday talking all things healthy. You can also check out Dr Joe's blog, drjoe.net.au, the address there on your screen.